We are recording. Hey. Max, take it over. Hello. Hi, Courtney, and hi, Malcolm. Hello. Hi, and welcome to Courtney on Health, a Zoomcast series about how to survive the COVID-19 pandemic with tips on nutrition and exercise given by Courtney Gravenies, registered dietitian with a CDN master, you'll have to explain the CDN master of science <laughs> in nutrition and applied psychology. So we're talking to someone who has excellent experience, um, nutritional and health consultant in New York uh, metro area. And Courtney will help guide you on a path to wellness and health. So I'm starting with a quote by John F. Kennedy said, physical fitness is not only one of the most important keys to a healthy body, it is the basis of dynamic and creative intellectual activity. So it's the mind and the body and the body and the mind. And then there's a quote by unknown because I have to add a little levity in. And the quote says, I don't sweat, I sparkle. <laughs> I guess, you know, when you're glistening in the gym, you're not sweating, you're sparkling. So being able to sparkle in this day and age is actually a good thing, I think. As a matter of fact, I named my standard poodle Pup Sparkles and walking, her, <laughs> and walking her at least three times a day gives me good exercise and makes us both sparkle. You want over here for a second? Sure. Yeah. It also makes me use my upper body strength as sometimes she pulls me in excitement. Um, biceps and triceps are muscles that are very important when you're walking your dog because if they pull, you're using your bicep and triceps. I don't know how I managed to get this in there, but so uh, so I, basically at that point, the question is, if is you are you walking your dog or is your dog walking you? And um, so I, I, that's that's the issue. I, I, Max, I just wanted to add one thing. There's an old saying that uh, animal sweat, men persp perspire, and women glisten. That's right. You got that right, kid. Oh, and we, no, and no. we and we sparkle, we sparkle. <laughs> uh, so needless to say, we're living in some crazy times and uh, we need to be you know, strong both physically and mentally and exercise is an important tool to keep our minds sharp and our bodies strong. And today, Courtney will fo focus on exercise that helps maintain upper body strength. I mean, there's obviously many benefits to exercise um, in as quickly as five minutes into physical activity individuals can notice enhancement in their mood and, and as exercise can help release stress and increase relaxation. Um, it's an energy booster and it helps improve health as it decreases blood pressure and heart rate and helps control weight and strengthens muscles and enhances immunity and helps you sleep. But today, again, we're gonna focus on uh, exercises that help maintain the upper body and Courtney, so why is it important to keep those upper body muscles in good shape? Yeah, so um, so we'll just do some of the upper body muscles um, this week, and then another week we're gonna um, break it up since we have such limited time. So yeah, you know, a couple of weeks ago we talked about the core muscles and why they're important for you know balance and stability, and you know, aside from those physical reasons that people want to strengthen their core. And it's no different with the muscles of the upper body. I think most people like really toned arms and back muscles um, and chest muscles, um, but we know that um, it certainly helps with injury reduction um, for whatever type of sport uh, you might be participating in. It does help with balance and posture. Again, um, we know that weight bearing exercise, resistance training, whether it be with exercise bands, um, you know, handheld weights or dumbbells or free weights helps with bone strength. So it reduces your risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia. So it's really fundamental to make it part of your overall wellness plan to incorporate some kind of resistance training. So no matter where you are in that, so it could be a young kid who wants to, you know, participate in uh, weight training, or it could be somebody, you know, who's a senior citizen who wants to do it to help, you know, simply if they fall on the floor and just cannot get up. I mean, I, you know, again, no matter where you are, or who's listening, we want to make sure this applies to everybody. But the reality is, if you are somebody who's, you know, a senior citizen who has fallen, and I, I don't want to make that joke, that commercial yeah. from, you know, a while ago. Uh but the yep. reality is if you don't have any upper body strength, you're not getting up off that floor. So if you need a 
plan to get off that floor if you fall into the floor. And that requires, in part, upper body strength. So today we're talking about bicep strength, bicep exercises, tricep exercises, and we're gonna sprinkle in a little bit of um, chest muscles that are called your pectoralis major. Um, they are huge muscles, um, so we want to make sure that that is included in your upper body strengthening package when you're, you know, starting to, you know, increase your resistance training. So again, you may know some of these exercises already. Some of them may be new, and we're going to put some modifications in there for maybe somebody who's um, not as, um, you know, agile and is not as comfortable with using weights. Um, we're definitely talking about push-ups because they are so key to upper body strength. I'm going to give you a modified version for that today in case you're not comfortable getting down to, uh, to the floor. So let's start with biceps. Okay, So they're called biceps because of the two major groups of muscles that run in the front of the arm. So the biceps are the muscles in the front of your arm. Triceps are the muscles in the back of your arm. So triceps have three groups of muscle heads that you need to work in the back of the arm. And as we said, your pectoralis major or your major muscle group in the chest muscles that come um, you know, in the front of your body. One issue I typically see with people when they're exercising is that they're constantly doing the same exercise over and over again, which of course is not terrible, but if you're really trying to increase strength and change the way you look, change the muscle, the way the muscle looks, you really need to shake things up a little bit um, not necessarily add more weight, but change up the exercise that you're doing. So I'm going to show you a variety of different bicep, tricep, and pectoralis exercises so that you can constantly move through a varying degree of exercises throughout your workouts. Um, so we'll start with biceps. Um, if you have, and when we did the core exercises, I think uh, we uh, were able to show some folks that even in the absence of handheld weights like these dumbbells, you can use empty water bottles, empty gallons of milk, um, soup cans. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's got some weight to it, um, you will derive the benefit from it. So you don't have to buy anything special, um, but it is helpful to have some basic equipment if you've got it. Um, so the traditional arm bicep curl um, that most people know um, is, again, you can do one bar, you can do two if you've got your dumbbells in here. You're going to lock in your elbows uh, to your rib cage, and you're lifting straight up and down. Most people are very, very familiar with this particular bicep exercise, and it's very effective, but it's not the only game in town. Simply by rotating the weights, so that as if you're holding a hammer, okay, that's why these are called hammer curls because you're mimicking holding a hammer and driving it up and down. Simply by changing the way your arms are located, you're going to recruit different muscle fibers, which is a good thing because as we said, you wanna constantly change up the exercise so that you're tackling more of the muscles in that group. A quick um, question, one question, Courtney. Another yeah, sure. one is hold the, what I do is hold the weights like that, but when I bring it up, I swing it around. Um, no, so you, you never want to use momentum. You want to use pure body energy. No, I'll show you a lot. Like it, it comes up like this. Um, so, and you also want to fight it on the way down, use that negative resistance. Uh -huh. So you can do that, but try not to use momentum. You don't want to swing it around. You want to make sure okay. it's very methodical, very smooth, um, and work within the weight that, uh, that, that you have. Another wonderful exercise that really tackles both big groups of muscles inside your bicep, you're going to lift up as if you're doing a traditional curl. You're going to rotate your hands and now your palms are coming down. Highly effective, it's a great bicep exercise. And again, you might need to go down and wait a little bit, but because it's a little more difficult to do that rotation, but you're coming up the same way as a curl, you're rotating and you're going to push down. So that's just an example, a few examples of some bicep exercises you can do. And again, if you don't have weights and you have an exercise band, you can do the same thing with the exercise band. Same motion, palm up, and you can do a bicep curl. Or like I said, use those empty gallons of milk or water um, and you're good to go. Let's shift gears and go to the back of the body. So a word about the muscles in the back of your body, and I think we touched on this when we did our core work, yeah? We don't use the muscles in the back of our body anywhere near as much as we use the muscles in the front of our body. Okay, think about everything we do. 
Maxine, you're walking your dog. Mm -hmm. Now, you're, you know, you said you're doing your weight. Most people know bicep exercises. We drink, we eat, we're driving a car. Those are all front of the body muscle utilizers. Okay. We very rarely use the back of the body. So we must make sure we're including those muscles in our workout so we've got balance um, and you're not overdeveloping one side of the body without you know, and forgetting the other side. So you want to make sure you hit those tricep muscles as well. So a couple of really effective tricep exercises, again, I'll show you with the band, um, is going to be a kickback. So you're going to lock that elbow in along your rib cage again. Give yourself some support. It can be a chair, it can be a wall, it can be um, uh, you know, a, a bookcase. It doesn't matter. You just want to give yourself some support. Your knees are slightly bent, um, but they're soft. You're going to kick back. As if, you know, think about the way a donkey kicks back. Your elbow's locked in, extend that arm back. This is a wonderful exercise for tricep muscles. What you do to one side, of course, you must do to the other side, but we're just working one arm at a time. If you want to, and you don't have weights, and you want to use the band, same motion. Hinge at the hip, lean over at the chair, lock that elbow in, and pull that band back. In many ways, I think people find the bands to be a much more effective, um, and certainly maybe an easier way to enter into the weight training, resistance training world, because they're very forgiving. So you can adjust the resistance while you're exercising. So it makes it a very valuable uh, piece of equipment um, to be able to, to, to use. Uh, another tricep exercise, overhead extensions. I'm just gonna back up a little bit. You're gonna hold the dumbbell very carefully. You don't wanna drop it on your noggin. Up overhead, elbows are in front of you. Knees are again soft, but about shoulder width apart. Drop that weight down, give you a side view, yeah? And extend it up. So overhead extensions. The only thing you really wanna be mindful of when you're doing these is that those elbows are forward and not winged out to the side like this. When they're forward like this, you're really tapping into the group of tricep muscles rather than using other um, muscles in your arms. So another great um, exercise for triceps. If you don't or you're not comfortable doing a push-up on the floor, um, and we know that the push-up is the gold standard in terms of amazing upper body strengthening with no equipment whatsoever. But if you're not comfortable doing that, you can use a wall and do a wall push-up you can use a chair like this. So it makes it a little bit easier and less intimidating for some folks because they don't have to, first of all, get down on the ground. Um, but you're getting this, some of the same benefit from it. So you're just going to back up a little bit so that you've created a little bit of an angle. Palms down, push down, and up. You want to really get as wide as you can and get as close to the chair or the wall whatever it is you're using, and make sure you keep breathing. You don't want to hold your breath when you're doing any of these exercises. So push-ups, no matter what way you do, are a great exercise for upper body in general. That happens to be great for your chest. If you do your palms together um, and create a diamond and you're on the floor, you're going to recruit more of the muscles in your triceps. Um, another chest exercise for those um, pectoralis major muscles we spoke about, using the band, you're going to wrap it around your back, I'm just going to show you, you extend out that band as far as you can, so you notice there's no slack in that band at all at this point, and you're going to reach forward, it's called a fly, some people do it um, with weights, so if you have weights, you can certainly do it on the floor. But this is a nice way, as I said, to really utilize these bands. They're very easy to use. And for some people getting down on the floor um, to do weight work becomes a problem and a barrier. And we're trying to remove a lot of these barriers to doing any kind of resistance training. So if you notice, it does look like you're a butterfly flying with your weights. So, you're sparkling. Nice it's a nice metaphor, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> so, Court, I have a quick, quick question. Sure. Um, what, I, I mean, everyone hopefully is in good shape and can do this. What, like I'm, I'm having an issue with my tricep and bicep now. So I'm not sure what exercise would 
hurt it or be okay for it? I know when this is not a physical therapy show, but do you have any tips at all in that area? Um, sure. Well, generally, if you've had an injury, um, the first thing we want to do is to, to rest it. Um, the rule generally is to rest it, ice it, ice it immediately after the injury has occurred, um, and then you stop the ice. Um, some people find uh, benefit and relief from using some type of anti-inflammatory, like a leave um, or you know ibuprofen or something, or Advil or something like that, um, and let it heal. Give it a little bit of time to heal, and then very slowly. Um, you know, reintroduce, if you have been doing resistance training, reintroduce some of that again. And if you're brand new to it, start with very, very low resistance with very basic um, moves. And we could, you could start just with that bicep exercise we were just, you know, showing you. Um, but I would use a very, very low dumbbell or a weight dumbbell or one of the resistance bands without a whole lot of, um, you know, give yourself a little bit of uh, resistance, but not very much. What's the low much. weight? What's the low weight dumbbell you're talking about? Um, if you've How many got, pounds? Well, I would think anything five pounds and under. Um, but again, that's relative, right? I mean, if I'm working with, you know, a 75 year old client, um, two, two pound dumbbells might be okay for, for him or for her. Um, Look, if I'm working with, you know, you know, a seasoned, you know, 25 year old for that person, man or woman, it might be 15 pounds is considered a low. So um, I think generally um, just really reintroducing with a low weight just to get back up into speed and then assess how you're feeling. And if it's really problematic, of course, and it's not going away, um, then seek out the help of a, you know, of a physician to evaluate it. But sometimes it's really just a little bit of, you know, um, muscle damage that can, that just needs some time to heal. Yeah. Courtney, uh, for, for us senior citizens, <laughs> uh, I, I find out that I, I do weight resistance, but I have arthritis in the shoulders and no matter what I do, or if I, if I uh, back off or I don't back off, it hurts. Like I cannot, I used to do pull-ups. Right. I can't do pull-ups now, my shoulders hurt. Right, well, the, the pull-up is a really challenging advanced move. So my suggestion would be, and you're not a senior citizen, Malcolm, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, is turn, you know, again, you know, it always depends on who I'm, with whom I'm working, mm -hmm. right? You gotta turn the volume down a little bit so that you're not, you're getting that sweet spot of you're getting stronger and you will get stronger without injuring, um, you know, the muscles and aggravating in your case, you know, arthritis. The pull up is extremely difficult. So maybe instead of a pull up, and we'll do shoulders in a couple of weeks, yeah. but maybe you just do some lateral raises yeah. with dumbbells or with an exercise band that's not as um, difficult as a move as the pull up. Your body weight's got a lot, to, not you personally, us in general, there's a lot. It's hard to lift your body weight. Um, really? So that's what I, I would suggest. I can pick up my dog as a weight, you know. There you go. But she's like 48 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Sparkling weight lifts, right. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to like that or not. Yeah, uh, but, but lift it with your thighs. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what I'll lift. I don't know what I'm going to, it ain't going to, it's not going to be my biceps and tricep at this point. Um, but uh, but it's, it's interesting because everybody comes to resistance training and from a slightly different place, right? They look at it through a different prism. So some people, like I said, are really doing it just for strength. Some people do it because they want to look better. Some people, but I feel like for everyone, and I hate to say this, but a lot of my female clients are, were historically slower to come around to weight training than the male clients. And it's better now. I mean, women understand that, you know, first of all, we're at greater risk for osteoporosis. Um, weight training is key. Uh, the more lean muscle you have on board, the greater your metabolic engine is going to run. So you are more efficient at burning calories. And I think most people understand that unless you're really doing a specific program for muscle building, truly muscle building, like bodybuilders, you don't really run the risk of getting like super silly big, unless of course you want that. So I think we've, we've dismantled that myth of weight training leads to, you know, super big muscle mass. Um, yeah, but, but you know what I find, like uh, I'm a member of a gym, 24-hour uh, fitness, 
And you go there and you see someone come in, might be middle-aged, you know, 40, 50 years old, and they look great in clothes. You know, when they do, they, they look trim and, th and thin. Then when you see them in the locker room and they take off their shirt, they had no muscle tone at all, and all the, you know, skin is dragging. In clothes, they look great. Without clothes, forget it. Well, I'm glad I don't have to look at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's, I mean, I mean, people, you know, now with, with COVID, you know, going to a gym is still questionable. Uh, people are going and gyms are coming back a bit, depending on where you are and what state you're in. But um, do, do, do you, I mean, is it a recommendation to, to, to when this all comes back? back to sort of normalcy to, to, to hit the gym more or you think people are just going to stay and now build like excess an extra exercise room in their house or something well, I don't know I mean some people remember some people like the gym environment for classes for group classes and all those zoom classes have certainly become very popular during you know COVID um, but some people really like the interpersonal being there so for that individual I would say they're going to want to go back to the gym mm -hmm. you can't be in terms of variety you know, depending on the gym you're going to, just the, you know, the breadth of equipment that's available to you. And as we said, when we started this segment, you know, the more variety you can build into it, you're going to get a far more efficient workout because you're just doing different exercises. You're tackling and you're recruiting different muscle fibers, which is really what you're looking for. I think for some people, the Zoom exercises um, from a cost perspective, and you guys know me, I'm always looking at ways to make health and wellness more of a budget friendly thing. I think for a lot of people, this was a game changer because it allows people to work out without the expense of a gym. Let's face it, some gyms can be super expensive. So um, I don't know, maybe it's going to be, I know this is an over overused word. It might be a hybrid for some folks. Maybe they'll do it sometime and they can do a limited membership and save some money. And then the other times they can, um, you know, do stuff at home. Weather's changing here. Malcolm, I know weather's always fantastic yeah. when you are, but it makes it more friendly outside. So people might walk more or hike more or hop on their bike now where they weren't doing that um, before. Because of the well, 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 just a tip for, for those on social security. <laughs> they, they no, they do have a program. I think it's called Senior Advantage, where you can join a, a gym, a, a major club, and it's free. They don't charge you anything. Wow. I, th I think it's called Senior Advantage. Uh, where, uh, it's sixty-five and above. That's wonderful. Yeah, you, you had you have to check your your whatever yeah. plan you have though, because <clears throat> they vary. You know. But, but I I joined my health club. Uh, when I first got to Hollywood, which was 40 years ago. Hmm. And they had a program for two years. And then I, I forgot how much it was. It would be $44 for the rest of your life. Wow. So I, I joined Holiday Spa and they sold and I thought, okay, that's the end of my plan. But they went to a Bally's and Bally's honored my, my uh, membership. So that's I was still paying $44. Wow. Then that yeah, became sure. LA Fitness, and I thought that was the end. And no, yeah. it wasn't the yeah. end. I'm still paying There's $44 so a year. Out there. So many options for people, um, which is great because you want to make it more accessible. And I do just want to mention, because uh, I get this question a lot from you know, parents with whom I work about kids and weight tr you know, resistance training. Um, so I don't think there's a hard and fast age um, you know, below which you don't want to have your kids resistance training, but loosely, I think around seven or eight um, is again, we always want to encourage physical activity period among any age. Um, but that's around the age we're certainly building in some kind of resistance training, not bodybuilding, there's a difference. Um, resistance training into their workout routine, particularly if they're very active in sports. Um, it creates a much more well-balanced um, plan for their exercise routine and can many ways can augment the sport uh, in which um, they participate. So that's a great thing. Bodybuilding is different. You really want to hold off on any kind of excessive weight training until they're maybe more adolescent age when um, most of their growth has already occurred. You don't really want to interfere with that too much. But resistance training, things we've mentioned today, we'll go over some different stuff in a couple of weeks when we do different upper body muscles. 
Um, but roughly seven or eight is around that age that would be acceptable. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a, sometimes it's a matter of semantics. When I was a teenager or, or younger, I never exercised. But right after school, I take off my clothes. I was in the schoolyard or the park playing basketball, playing football, playing baseball. But the key word was playing. It wasn't exercise. When people think of exercise, they think of work. I got right. to exercise. Right. But so physical activity. being yeah, as, as kids, we were playing. Right. Right. Yeah, me too. Come out and play, but but I was on you know teams in in um in high school, so the, you know you had to do pre you know you had to do exercise to 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 loosen up. You had to do ex, you know to to work different parts of your body depending on your the position right. you were playing. So, but everything you know is the same but different. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, things, you know, are different from when I was in school, you know, and, and today, I don't know what they're, you know, giving the routines for the, the high school teams and the, the specialized teams. I know my son was always doing, you know, a team and had to work out. So, but, right. the, the, but the question, you know, that you answered is when, because I was going to ask, when do you start to exercise? When do you and, and then when do you ever stop is my next question. I mean, how far, you know, you, you could start at seven or eight um, and keep going till? Uh, well, you know, not to be gruesome, but you know when that is. <laughs> okay, so it's when, you, it's when you're, uh, when the when you're undercover. For, for sure. Absolutely, right. that's how we try to make this, you know, it's like, it's, it's physical activity across the age span, right? So teaching it young, modifying when you're older. So maybe you're turning the volume up a lot during like the, you know, the heyday, right? So mm -hmm. when you're, you know, younger and you maybe, remember you lose muscle mass as you get older. So it's really important. That's what I'm saying. I'm not kidding. If you really should be doing resistance training and physical activity up until the point where, you know, life, life ceases. So we lose muscle mass as we get older. So you want to do everything you can to preserve what you've got and maybe build a little bit more. So it becomes really instrumental um, to make that part of your, of your routine. So uh, you might need to modify it a little bit. In fact, my dad was just here visiting and I'm constantly working with him on, I bought a, a Pilates ring um, and he's got exercise bands. So he's not you know, outside running miles anymore, but he's doing what he can do now because he knows how important it is. You can do chair aerobics. You can do, mm -hmm. if somebody's not comfortable standing, anything that I went through today can be done in a seated position. The tricep kickback is a little different, you know, uh, a little bit challenging, but you can be in a chair and doing overhead tricep extensions and they're perfectly fine. Just pick a weight that's comfortable for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, Courtney, a personal question, and I, 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 you know, I've just met you recently. Have you ever been out of shape? Um, yes, college. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> I, I have always run. I've been a runner. Always, it's my, it's my head clearing, centering. Uh, it's just, you know, I love to do it. But it, over the years, I've definitely modified to incorporate more yoga, more strengthening, more stretching, more centering activities, and I find that that's better for me. Um, so my, I, honestly, my, I think my worst shape, maybe not, maybe not college, um, but maybe right, you know, right after that, and then, you know, I, it, it just went, you know. Is it uphill, downhill? It was when it got easier, and I got it became more of just what I what I did. So because I I think there are a lot of women looking at you and saying, no, I'll never get that way, mm -hmm. but they will. <laughs> but it, and you know what? It doesn't. It's not about what I look like. It's about what you what people feel, mm -hmm. where they're what makes them comfortable, and yep. so and, and and happy and what exercise does for your head and for your head space and for your confidence. So no, I mean I mean. So you don't have to get down to, you know, the, the tiniest weight you've ever been to, but it has to be the strongest that you feel and put you in a good space. And that's what it really needs to be about. Right. Yeah, absolutely. When I was even, when I, even when I walk just, you know, up and down our street, you know, which is minimally three times a day now that my dog is making me, um, <laughs> it, it, I, I, I always felt better even walking when I didn't have puppy, but, you know, it does do something for for your it clears your your mind a bit you know exercise oh, definitely has you know that effect that it clears 
the stress of it, you, you definitely do feel better. And especially if you get to walk out in a beautiful area, you know, and, and enjoy the nature and watch the birdies. And so it, it has a calming effect too. Yeah, I, I know when I was into running, uh, uh, after a while the endorphins kick in, which is called the feel good uh -huh. hormone. Sure, and, sure. and literally, you know, you would, uh, I'd be running, you know, a few miles and it gets hard and down. And all of a sudden, I, some people call it the second wind. All of a sudden you feel good. And then I found out it was endorphins kicking in. It absolutely is. It's great. Like I said, it's great for clearing the head. And I think for a lot of people, just finding a place to go and walk. So maybe if you don't live in a place that's got beautiful tree lined, you know, blocks, that's fine. Well, maybe you live in, you live in the city. This, most cities are, can be fairly walkable. Uh, which is, you know, you don't need a car. Most people don't have a car. So let that be your walkway, right? Maybe put on some cranking music that really drives you and really makes you feel good and just head out and walk. Or if it's a really cruddy rainy day and you can't go outside and you live in an apartment building, go up and down the stairs. I did that when I was living in the city. It's not pretty, it's the stairwells. <laughs> but like I said, throw on some music and just go and you will get that same endorphin rush that you get when you're walking on a pretty street. Um, it's not really the venue, although that definitely helps. Um, it's what's going on inside of you and what's really moving yeah. you. And, and anyway, Courtney, as usual, our half hour is up, but it's up on a high note. <laughs> uh -huh. See, there you go. I'm gonna end it with a quote, is that okay? Sure. All right, so end quote. In a nutshell, your health, wealth, happiness, fitness, and success depend on your habits. Moreover, habits can be built from scratch, replaced, tweaked, or dumped. And this was by Joanna East, and then she wrote, hack your habits. But it's true, it, uh, uh, exercise can become a habit, a good habit and a habit that can help you mentally and physically. So thanks for joining us for Courtney on Health. Uh, to get more info, follow Courtney on her Facebook page, which is Courtney on Health, on Instagram at CLG Wellness, and her hopefully soon to be when we have a handle on her website. Uh, that's that's uh, in progress. Uh, for more for more shows, go to malcolmpresents.com and the many shades of green.com. Uh, remember, Courtney on health, smart, sound nutrition, strong, safe fitness, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks a lot, Courtney. My pleasure.